Now the important thing is then, when you show the child what is, what is wrong, that the showing does not come from a place of fear. Okay, it's always uh, easier to answer something that's a concrete situation. So for example, with your child, um, can you give just one example of choice of behavior? Well, there are some children who bite. Bite? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. There are some children who, who bite other children. Um, and for, <laughs> it's true. And they do it, um, some do it just because they're still sensing with their mouths. And others do it out of anger. But it's a behavior that's harmful and, and frightening for others. So, um, you know, parents certainly are confused about um, whether the child is able to understand consequences or whether it's just more love, more love, more love that's going to help that child to grow out of that particular behavior, mm -hmm. you know, or running into a street or breaking away in a parking lot. You know, any of those behaviors are dangerous. Yes. Um, and it's important to modify them, but yes. um, but is it, it is it through through firmness or okay. is it through grace and love and okay? You know. Now I understand completely what you're okay. asking. Or even you needed to mention the biting, then now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a very subtle balance because, of course, certain behaviors have consequences and if that's completely ignored on the side of the parent then eventually the consequences of that type of behavior will come worse so at some point they will learn that biting others is wrong and they will, will experience the consequences if you don't show them the consequences or make them aware of what they are doing We'll talk about how in a second. If you don't, then eventually when they go to kindergarten or school, eventually another child will bite them back, which may be a more painful way of experiencing the karmic result of their behavior. So the more you wait, the more painful the karmic result of your behavior becomes. Or youngsters who are left free to do whatever they like, and eventually, the parents try to shelter them from all consequences of their actions and protect them from consequences. And eventually, then they will do something and then society will show them in the form of a police coming to your door that there are consequences to actions and, and then the, the, the karma might have worsened by then because the consequences may be and what they do to others may be far worse than what, the, what they've done at the age of six. So eventually, the universe will show you the consequences. So it's good for a parent, in a gentle way, to show the child the consequences of certain unconscious actions, if only not just to protect them from karmic retribution at a later stage, but also sometimes simply to protect them from themselves because they might get themselves into a very dangerous place if you don't. And I've seen some parents that allow their children to be to, to walk along the seawall or whatever and they can go to one false step and they would be gone. <laughs> and so, but the parent just didn't want to interfere so they, you know, they lose a balance between allowing and showing the child what is not right and protecting the child. Now the important thing is then, when you show the child what is, what is wrong, that the showing does not come from a place of fear. Because if it comes from a place of fear in you, and that could be, for example, when you see the child going close to a precipice or whatever, or close to the traffic or the road. And sometimes I observe mothers or fathers who become almost hysterical because out of fear. And then they run up to the child and they shake the child. Don't you ever do that again! <laughs> that for the child, it's, it's a dreadful trauma. It's almost worse than being run over by a car. <laughs> <laughs> or it's the emotional equivalent of being run over by a car. 
Uh, can you imagine the trauma inflicted on a little child when a big grown-up shouts at them and there's an outflow of extreme, extremely destructive fear energy onto the child? And that, that mo moment within a space of one minute, the child's pain body is growing. It's absorbing all that. And then, then they are surprised if a little later the child goes into extreme negative emotions and moods and, sh and, shout it and shouts and screams. The child has already absorbed the fear of the mother. But of course the mother wanted to do well. It wanted to protect the child, but the mother was unconscious. Doesn't realize that the protection is almost worse than that, that which, which she's be, being protected against. <laughs> It's almost like using an insecticide that is far worse than the insects. <laughs> and so the, the question then, your question, grace is very important, that you use that word. The, grace must be part of the showing. Grace is, is a compassionate space where you recognize that the child does not know yet. You don't punish the behavior you simply show clearly that this is wrong in the same way that we have to show our dog. In some ways, dogs also need to be taught that certain behaviors have consequences. So we, you don't hit a dog. Well, I don't know. Maybe if you have a put bill, ta put book, what are they called? Bull, pit bull, you might occasionally have to slap because they might have enormous <laughs> energy. but. Our dog doesn't need that. Our dog comes, we hold out a little treat, and usually the dog will go, ah! And sometimes it gets, you get your finger in there, and that is karmically not good for the dog. So, <laughs> we say, we say, when it, when it happens, we go, ouch! And the dog is a little bit shocked and realizes on some level that he did, he, she has just hurt you. You go, ouch! <laughs> the dog, and the dog realizes, oh, I shouldn't have done that. That's a very gentle way of doing it. So the grace when you do a child, um, the worst response is always the one that comes out of fear. Because out of fear also comes anger and so on. So when you pull the child back from the road, getting too close to the, the traffic, and you might have to act fast, but the, the important thing is that just enough consciousness in you that you do not put fear onto the child. So you pull back in awareness and then, oh, this is it's very dangerous, you ex but not the fear, just an alertness rather than the fear, that's grace. And so that's the, every parent has to walk this, find this balance, bit, of course, between interfering and stopping the child and showing the child consequences and allowing the child. There needs to be a balance. It's not always easy, not always immediately obvious which one, whether to allow or whether not to not allow. But if you not allow, the important thing is that it doesn't come from negative reaction. Uh, so that's the, might maybe helpful a little bit for you. Uh, again, self-awareness is the, the key, especially in a moment of crisis. You need to be doubly alert within yourself. The more critical a situation is, the more alertness is required. <laughs>